Well, listen to live commentary on BBC Sounds. Here it's the lunchtime news now with Sean Lay. Hello, good afternoon. The Vatican has announced the death of Pope Benedict the 16th. He was 95. His health had deteriorated in recent weeks. Benedict led the Roman Catholic Church for eight years until 2013, when he became the first pope in six centuries to announce his retirement. Born Joseph Ratzinger in Germany, he was known for his conservative theological outlook, as the BBC's religion editor Ali McBall reports. Cerebral by character, Benedict was a prolific author and more at home with scholarship than pastoral work. He led the world's Catholics for eight years and then abruptly resigned, the first pope to do so in 600 years. Joseph Ratzinger was born in southern Germany. He was just six when the Nazis swept into power. His parents were hostile to the regime and though their son entered junior seminary in 1939, he was forced to join the Hitler Youth just two years later. He and his brother George were ordained on the same day in 1951. George became a parish priest. Joseph chose a quite different kind of ministry. First a doctorate, appointments at prestigious universities, and then the Vatican. A cardinal by his early 50s, an ailing Pope John Paul II made him head of the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, formerly the Roman Inquisition. There, he upheld traditional Catholic teaching on abortion, contraception and homosexuality. He even spoke against rock music and the Harry Potter books. When John Paul died in April 2005, he was one of the church's longest serving cardinals and presided at the funeral. His homily, based on Jesus' instruction, follow me, proved prophetic. After just four ballots, white smoke from the Sistine Chapel announced Cardinal Ratzinger's election. The oldest pope for 275 years. As Pope Benedict XVI, he sought to re-evangelize the West. It was an attempt to roll back the advance of secularism in Europe and North America. But in it lay an acknowledgement of the church's declining influence in its traditional heartlands. But he also sparked controversy in 2006, when during a lecture he gave in Germany, he quoted criticism of Islam by a 14th century Christian leader and appeared to link the religion with jihad and holy war. There were violent protests in several Muslim countries. The Pope apologized and made a point of setting up the first Catholic Muslim forum. He seemed chastened by the experience and on visits like this one to Britain, Benedict exuded pastoral warmth and warned against marginalization of religion. But back in Rome, the church was beginning to confront the scandal of sexual abuse by priests around the world. He was forced to deny that he'd played any role in covering up abuse, but the cases continued to mount. He later acknowledged he'd made mistakes in handling the matter. At conditionem certam perveni, in February 2013, he shocked the world, announcing he would resign at the end of the month, citing age and failing health. The election of his successor, Pope Francis, represented a break with much of what Benedict had stood for. The challenge was to find a leader who could close the widening gap between a doctrinally conservative Vatican and the church worldwide. Pope Benedict upheld the creeds of the church and taught them with conviction. He died as he lived, thinking and writing about how to defend and advance those creeds in an increasingly secular world.
Well, our correspondent Bethany Bell is in Rome now. Bethany, uh, what reaction has there been so far and how will the death of the former Pope be marked by the Vatican? Well, we've been told that the funeral will take place on the 5th of January and that Pope Francis will preside. This is new territory for the church. The biographer of Pope Benedict told us that this is the first time in the 2,000-year-old history of the church that a sitting pope will preside over the funeral of his predecessor. And tributes have been pouring in for Pope Benedict from around the world. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, said that Benedict was a great theologian. He said his thoughts were with Catholics in the UK and around the world. The German leader, Olaf Scholz, from Benedict's home country of Germany, said the church had lost a formative figure, a combative personality and a great theologian. Here in St. Peter's Square, people have been expressing their shock and sorrow at the death of Pope Benedict. Anna Maria, who's visiting Rome from Bologna, told us that she rushed to the Vatican as soon as she heard the news. Barbara from Barcelona said this was an unprecedented historical moment. Bethany Bell in Rome, thank you very much. Now here the government says its decision to introduce new COVID checks for people arriving on flights to England from China is because the Chinese government isn't sharing health information about what's going on there. From next Thursday, travellers will have to provide a negative test before boarding their flight from China. Some random testing will be carried out on arrivals in England. Well, our political correspondent Leila Nathu is here with me now. Leila, it feels like a change, is it? Well, I think, Sean, what's changed is simply the Prime Minister's mind. We've been hearing earlier this week from ministers that the situation was under review. Clearly, the international context was evolving as well, with more countries announcing that they would require those tests from arrivals from China. But I think in the last few days, the thinking inside government was leaning towards the fact that there wasn't yet the evidence to warrant bringing in this testing requirement. No worries yet about a possible new variant spreading in China. That was the main worry. And a confidence, I think, in the immunity in towards COVID COVID in the population here. But it's clearly been a live conversation and now it appears those concerns about whether we actually have an accurate picture of what is going on in China when it comes to COVID, the true scale of COVID there and whether there are in fact signs of a new variant, those concerns have pushed ministers to act. Now, those concerns around transparency when it comes to China and COVID have been around for some time. The Health Secretary Steve Barclay is stressing that these are precautionary and temporary measures, but they are the first set of COVID related measures to be introduced here since the spring and I think they will reopen those old debates around COVID about decision making in government about the speed at which the government is acting and of course the effectiveness of measures introduced and the balance between them and any disruption they may cause. Lelo thanks very much. There are reports of several blasts in Kyiv this afternoon with air raid sirens sounding in Ukraine's capital. Media reports suggest at least 10 explosions were heard in the city with local authorities urging residents to go to shelters. The mayor of Kyiv says that at least one person has died, several others have been injured. Four members of the England women's football team that won the European Championship this year are among those named in the New Year's honours list. The Lionesses coach, Serena Wiegmann, who is Dutch, receives an honorary award. There are knighthoods for Queen Guitarist Prime Mate and the artist Grayson Perry, while the former Olympic heptathlete Denise Lewis becomes Dame Denise. Lisa Mazimba has more and a warning that his report does contain flashing images. Brian May on top of the palace and now feeling on top of the world. The guitarist and animal welfare campaigner knighted not just for services to music, but for his charity work too. I do feel that this is not just a kind of reward or a gong. This is a kind of license, a kind of commission to carry on doing what I'm doing. And, and it gives me a bit more power to my elbow. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. A fellow campaigner, Virginia McKenna, becomes a dame for her work with wildlife, work that was ignited when she appeared in the film Born Free. Absolutely. And artist Grayson Perry says he's surprised and humbled to be knighted. Other well-known figures honoured include Anne Diamond, whose long-standing campaign to help prevent cot death is thought to have saved the lives of thousands of babies. She becomes an OBE as to actors Stephen Graham and David Harewood and illustrator 
David Sutherland, who's drawn some of the Beano's best-known characters for 60 years. It's, it's pretty special and pretty amazing. For helping organise this year's spectacular Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, along with an outstanding sports career, former Olympic champion Denise Lewis is made a dame. Once you've accomplished something as, as meaningful, as, I guess, iconic as an Olympic gold medal, I think it's about giving back, and so I have endeavoured to do that. And so I'm beside myself, I'm overwhelmed, I'm delighted and immensely proud. Most people being honoured never expected to be in the public eye. People like Luena Hood, a nanny who organised supplies and raised tens of thousands of pounds for people fleeing Ukraine. She receives a British Empire medal. How does it feel to be honoured like this? I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And I think because we've had a bit of a gap and I'm able to look back and reminisce, um, it is incredible what you can do in such a short amount of time. I think if I planned it, it would never have happened, but we just, we just went with it and, um, yeah, it was amazing. Just one of the many being recognised for making a difference to others. Lisa Mazimba, BBC News. New Year Eve celebrations have been getting underway in some parts of the world. In New Zealand, our fireworks display lit up Auckland's Sky Tower. And this was the scene just a few minutes ago in Sydney in Australia with the Harbour Bridge at the centre of the spectacular display there. Well, all the New Year is Eve celebrations on the BBC News Channel throughout the day. The next news here on BBC One is at 25 past five from all of us on the lunchtime team. Good afternoon.